Hey guys, it's Willie Away, and welcome to the next episode of Through the Parks. Today we're going to be covering um, the American Samoa, well, the National Park of American Samoa. And yeah, this one was interesting. I honestly did not know it was a park, and originally I thought it was like near Hawaii. I mean, it is relatively, out of the whole entire United States, the closest place I think it is to is Hawaii, but technically it's closer, I think, to like Australia. <laughs> and that kind of shocked me because I was like, and it's still, it's still considered a U.S. territory. So we're going to get into the overall information, which is relatively short. Um, there's not a lot of, is this, hmm. Somebody, okay, if you hear construction or something in the background, ignore that. Someone's doing something outside their house now with electric tools and I can hear it, so you guys can probably hear it. Anyways, we'll get into the overall info. Um, it was relatively short. There's not too much on here, but I mean, I'm still going to tell you anyways. So, the National Park of American Samoa is located in the U.S. territory, which spans across four islands. These four islands are, okay, I hope I pronounced this right, uh, Tutulia. Ofu, Olosega, and Tau. The park mainly protects and preserves coral reefs, tropical rainforest, fruit bats, and the Samoan culture. Activities at the parks include hiking and snorkeling. Um, the park's total acreage is 8,257. Meanwhile, 2,500 of these acres are purely coral reefs and ocean. And this park is the only American national park that is south of the equator. Which, like I, like I said, it's it's surprising that you know it, I like I literally looked it up on Google Maps and I was like, damn, this is still a national park. It is. So we're gonna get into the history of how this was made into a national park, which will kind of tell you guys exactly how uh, a island in south of the equator became a national park for the United States. So in 1984, delegate Fofo Isofa, Isofa Fiti Sunai, I believe introduced a bill to include American Samoa in the Federal Fish and Wildlife Restoration Act. Now, this bill was requested from the Bat Preservers Association and by someone called Dr. Paul Cox. The purpose of this bill was to protect the habitat of a bat species called the flying fox and to protect the old rainforests. Um, this bill would eventually start off the, um, you know, the beginning of America, American Samoa's entry into the national park system. And the, M the MPS, so the National Park Service, would start to establish the National Park in July 1987. <clears throat> and then on October 31st, 1988, the National Park of American Samoa was established officially by Public Law 100-571. However, the National Park Service could not buy the land because of traditional communal land system. Uh, and then eventually this, uh, this problem was solved or was resolved on September 10th, 1993, because the National Park Service entered a 50-year lease of the park from the Samoan Village Councils. In 2002, Congress approved a 30% expansion on Olosega and Ofu Islands. And then, uh, this is just a little bit of history. Uh, it doesn't have anything really to do with the park's creation, but in September 2009, an earthquake and a tsunami uh, led to 34 confirmed deaths and more than 100 injuries. And it destroyed about 200 homes and businesses. The park would eventually experience major damage due to this earthquake and tsunami, leading to the visitor center and the main office to both be destroyed. Luckily, though, there was only one reported injury among National Park Service staff and volunteers. Now we're going to get into uh, a specific island. So... We'll be covering uh, Tutulia, Tutuila, I believe, which is the portion of the park which is located on the northern end of uh, Pago Pago Island. It is separated by Mount Alava and the Magua Loa Ridge. It includes the Amalua Valley, Craggy Point, Taufu Cove, and the islands of Pola and Manofa. This is the only part of the park that is accessible by car, and it is usually what attracts the most visitors due to the fact of that it is easier to access than some of the other islands. This park, or this area of the park, includes a trail to the top of Mount Oliva uh, and a historical World War II gun emplacement site, both at Beakers Point and Blunt's Point. So this trail runs along the ridge uh, of 
dense forests, and then the north of the trail, uh, the land slopes very steeply into the ocean. Now we're going to get into an island group, so we're going to get into the Manawa Island group. This consists of Ofu and Tao. So the Ofu unit is only accessible by small fishermen boats, which are from Tao Island. And there are accommodations on Ofu Island, and like that's about as much as I got from this area. That is all that's really covered is just that you can only access it by small boats, which come from Tao Island, and then there are accommodations on Ofu Island. So the Tao Island can be reached from a flight from uh, Tutulia to uh, Fiti Uta village, and then you know on Tao. So um, what is it? You take a flight from Tutulia to Fitu Uta village, which is on Tao, so you just cross islands. Um, and then, like Ofu, there are accommodations on Tao Island, and along with this, on this island, there is a trail that runs from uh, Saua around Siu Point to the southern coastline, and then it has stairs um, that lead up to the 3,170 foot summit of Lata Mountain. And that is all for our individual islands. Now we're going to get into just the overall biodiversity of these islands and all the different creatures on them. So due to this, this park's like remote location, approximately 30% of all of the plants and exactly one bird species uh, are endemic to the uh, arch archipelago. Oh my god, I know how to say this. Archipelago? I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I, I know I'm ignore that okay uh meaning that they only exist on the islands so the fauna this is the majority of what consists there's a lot of fauna um there are only three bat species that are native um to the island these include the samoa flying fox the white naped flying fox and the pacific sheath-tailed bat those bats are considered very important to the island due to the fact that they po uh, pollinate a lot of the island's plants and eventually, the sheath-tailed bat was almost eliminated in 1991 by Cyclone Vale, and it was believed to have possibly became locally extinct sometimes after that cyclone. There are four reptiles that are native to the island. These include the Oceana gecko, the molted snake-eyed uh, skink, the Micronesian skink, and the olive small-scaled skink. Um, eight more reptiles were introduced um, to the Polynesian settlement. These would include the copper-tailed skink, the azure-tailed skink, <laughs> my favorite one, the black emo skink, uh, the Samoa skink, moth skink, and Pacific slender-toed gecko, morning gecko, and the Pacific boa. Um, I like that one just because it has emo in the name. It made me laugh when I was reading it. I was like, no way, that's actually the name for it. Um, three reptiles were introduced in the modern, modern era. These are your stump-toed gecko, your common house gecko, and the brahimini, brahimini blind snake. Um, some mammals that were uh, introduced like before modern times were your Polynesian rats, pigs, and dogs. However, during what is considered like modern era, cats, black rats, brown rats, and house mouses were introduced. And there's only one amphibian found on the islands, which is the cane toad. And several different bird species do live on the islands. These would include your walted honey eater, Samoan starling, Pacific pigeon, Tahiti uh, petro, spotless crake, and the rare many-colored fruit dove, which is actually really pretty. I had to look up a photo because I was like, it it's rare. I want to see what this looks like. And it is very gorgeous. Now we get into our flora, which is just like your plants. So the island is mainly covered in tropical rainforests. It also has a cloud forest on Tau and a lowland ridge forest on uh, Tutulia, Tutula. Most plants arrived uh, to the islands from Southeast Asia and there are currently 343 flowering plants and 135 ferns and 30% of those species are endemic, meaning they can only be found on the islands. The marine life around the islands include, obviously, your sea turtles, your humpback whales, 950 different species of fish, <laughs> and over 250 coral species. Um, and some of the largest living coral colonies in the world are at Tao Island. Their coral is very important. It's 
one of their biggest things, and it's also, we'll get into the threats that are occurring to them uh, in a minute, but they are being threatened. So now we're going to get into the geology, because um, these are islands, they are, um, well, the Samoan islands are volcanic, um, they're composed of shield volcanoes, which develop from a hot spot on the Pacific Plate. If you don't know, volcanoes are usually formed by hot spots, which just means that lava escapes and then it forms like a little island. That, that I was reading this and that surfaced up from like fifth grade geo, uh, geography, so there you go. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, it just crawled out of like the back of my memories and was like, oh, we know how islands are made. And I'm like, oh, yes, we do, damn. But yeah, so there we go. These emerged uh, sequentially from the west to the east, so the hotspot is moving from the west to the east, which creates these islands. Tutulia is the largest and oldest, which uh, approximately emerged from 1.24 to 1.4 million years ago. Uh, the islands are not made up of individual volcanoes, however, they are composed of overlapping and superimposed shield volcanoes, which were built by uh, uh, basalt lava flows. Much of the lava that has erupted has since broken into angular fragments, which are known as brucia, I believe. Tau Island is the youngest of the islands, and it, it is included in the National Park, is all that remains from the collapse of a shield volcano during uh, what is called the Holocene time. This collapse would produce sea cliffs, which were over 3,000 feet high on the north side of the island, and this exists on the high highest such is, uh, escrapements in the world. And since the Samoan Islands are considered volcanoes, um, they have not shown any evidence of volcanoism for many years. The Samoa hotspot beneath the islands does continue to give indications of activities, with a submarine eruption detected just east of American Samoa in 1973. Um, the... I'm, I'm trying not to pronounce his name wrong. The Valulu... Oh, I know that's wrong. Um... V-A-I-L-U-L-U, comma U, Seamount, which is located east of Tau, is a future Samoan island developing from submarine lava flows, continuing the eastward progress of volcanic development from the hotspot below the islands. So the hotspot is still active and it is still currently creating other islands, and that Seamount is probably going to be the next Samoan island. So the lava flows forming the Seamount have been dated by radiometric methods, uh, to be between 5 and 50 years, during which time the seamount has risen 14,764 feet from the ocean floor. Um, on Tau Island, an inland escrapement known as Liuo Bench um, threatens to slump into the nearby ocean. This kind of, I was shocked to hear this, but an event like that, of it falling into the ocean, could produce a tsunami strong enough to bring devastation to the islands of Fiji to the southeast. Which is crazy to think. But if you think about it, it's a huge piece of probably rock and other sediment falling into the ocean. So it would create some massive waves. Um, Ofu and Olasega are the remains of a single uh, basaltic volcano, four miles north to south and six miles east to west, which formed in the Piloceni to early Pelistocene? Ah, I already know I'm pronouncing all these wrong. Uh, Pelistos Pelistocene. There we go. And then remnants of one half of the cauldra, which a cauldra is when basically, ah, I, I remember what it is from Yellowstone. It's like, it's sitting right there. Basically think of it like a dip in a volcano. Like, the very top of the volcano, I think, is like kind of what a cauldra is. Uh, but remnants of one half of the cauldra uh, ponded flows form the north center portion of Ofu. And that's all for geology. There's a lot more geology if you want to go read some more, but like I said, I try not to cover stuff that I don't understand too much. Um, this is just kind of stuff I can pick up and be like, oh, I, I understand what that means, but there's some stuff in there where I'm like, I'm not a geologist. <laughs> Y'all are getting into specifics. But if you do want to look around, there's definitely more geology about the Samoan Islands. Uh, the threats currently to the islands are mainly focused on the coral reefs. Um, they are under significant threat due to the rising ocean temperatures and carbon dioxide concentration as well as sea level rising. However, um, 
Due to these threats, the corals are projected to be lost by mid-century if carbon dioxide continues to rise at the current rate that it is currently rising at. So let's get those carbon dioxide stuff down a bit, guys, please. I don't want to lose these, like, at all. And to end on a lighter note, because I don't want to end on the threats, um, a quarter was released, so a little quarter, <laughs> Um, was released back in 2020 for the America the Beautiful collection, and it features a Samoan fruit, back, fruit bat on the back. I have this quarter, and we had this quarter, and I remember looking at it, and it was it's so cute. It, you need to look it up. It's like a it's a mother little fruit bat holding like a baby bat, and it's just on the back of this quarter, and I remember like freaking out. It was so cute. I kept it, and then I remember I was working and. They gave, like, oh, someone was paying cash, and they gave me a quarter, and it was the back quarter, and I was like, oh my god, you have a back quarter, and they just looked at me, and they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, you have a back quarter, you know, like, look how cute it is, and I showed them the quarter, and it was so cute. I did not know it was the, um, you know, the National Park of America Samoa quarter, but it is a really cute quarter, and if you do have it or ever get it, keep it, because it is, it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Personally, it's one of my favorite, like, back of the quarters. Because some quarters do have designs on the back, so make sure you check your quarters. <laughs> but that one was my favorite, and we're going to end on that light note of go collect that back quarter. It is adorable. Uh, and I will see you guys next time with what park? I have no clue yet. We'll see. I'm kind of going down my list. Um, I have them in alphabetical order in, like, a, my notes app. I'm just kind of scrolling, seeing which ones jump out to me, and we, I just kind of go from there. Um, and yeah, I don't know how far along we are covering all the national parks, but I feel like we're making good progress, so, uh, I'm excited about that. <laughs> I'm a sucker for national parks. I mean, can you tell? Can you tell that I like national parks? Oh, I love them so much. I, there's just something about national parks, but I do have an idea, and I haven't, started this yet, so don't, I'm not promising it, but thinking about starting another thing where I cover, uh, cryptids and other creepy stories and stuff like that, haven't decided exactly what I'll do with it, but it is, it is sitting back there. So if you guys are interested in listening to creepy stories, like creepypastas or talking about, like, uh, cryptids or something like that, you know, just tell me in the comments and I will see what I can put together. But until then, please like and subscribe. It helps a lot. And I will see you guys later for the next part. And as always, until our next adventure, may your trails be filled with wonderlust. And I will see you guys in the parks. Goodbye.